Joining us now, Assistant Democratic Leader, Congressman Jim Clyburn of South Carolina. He is also a national co-chair for President Biden's 2024 campaign. It is good to have you back on the show. A lot of questions for you this morning. I'll, I'll start, sir, with why no Democrats made the decision to, to save him. Do you feel that Democrats had a choice here or had Kevin McCarthy basically made it impossible to save him? Well, first of all, thank you very much for having me, Mika. He made it virtually impossible. Last Saturday, he put his bill on the floor uh, to keep the government open. He addressed the issues of disasters, did not address Ukraine, Ukraine which Democrats wanted, did not address other issues like voting and immigration, but we voted for it, all but mm -hmm. one. He got 209 Democratic votes, Two of our people were absent. One voted no. He only got 126 Democrats, I mean Republicans. So the next morning he goes on TV and blame Democrats for everything that went wrong the day before and blame us for wanting to shut down the government. Made it impossible for Democrats to find some uh, area of commonality. He just did not want us to vote for it at all. And so, Mm -hmm. He was obliged uh, with the vote on yesterday, uh, much to my chagrin. So now we have retribution taking place in real time, uh, hearing word that Nancy Pelosi, Steny Hoyer kicked out of their offices, things like that. Uh, gamesmanship. What do you make of it? Well, it's a bit, um, well, let's let me say it's untoward. Uh, I, I don't think that we should be doing stuff like that. Uh, what Steny and Nancy were doing with their offices, uh, I did not occupy one. I stayed uh, in my congressional office uh, in anticipation that something like this could uh, come to pass. But um, it's untoward, to say the least. We show more right. honor uh, for longtime service, senior service, uh, than they seem to be demonstrating. Uh, and I'm very sorry to see that. So I, I'm just curious what you think will happen next. I mean, one of the, the questions in my mind was, I mean, could somebody worse become speaker or is Kevin McCarthy rock bottom in terms of being able to do deals, to get work done and to operate uh, under the same fact pattern that everybody else is operating under? And I think there were a lot of questions about him as it pertains to Trump, January 6th, and other issues, but who else now? Well, there are a lot of people on their side, and there are one or two people on our side, most especially uh, Speaker Hakeem Jeffries. I think the country got a good chance last Saturday uh, when he filibustered on the floor uh, with such a great uh, speech. Uh, they watched the vote yesterday, uh, how we uh, sat uh, in unison and unanimity. Uh, listening to the uh, war taking place on the other side. So there are people on both sides that could do this. I think that um, uh, their leader, uh, I know he's having some health problems, uh, but Steve Scalise uh, is a great guy. Uh, I think mm -hmm. that um, Cole uh, would be a sort of a, uh, at the kind of tone that we would like to see. Uh, but I'm going to let them handle their business, and we're going to handle ours, and hopefully they'll do something that will make the American people pleased uh, with our activities here in Washington. Leader Clyburn, so many of your fellow Democrats yesterday said that one of the reasons why they couldn't vote to save Kevin McCarthy is they simply didn't trust him. Uh, you just mentioned a few of the possible Republican candidates to be the next speaker. Can you trust them? And do you think they can do the job if it's just going to be a handful of Republicans, Matt Gates and others, uh, you know, holding them hostage with the threats to vacate their position, too? Well, I think that what happens when you uh, give away the store uh, to one or two people? We had a very workable rule on how to deal with uh, successions to the speakership uh, if the, the chair were to be vacated. They decided not to do that and decide to give that power to one person. I've been telling people all of, for all of my life, really, uh, that if that's 
efficiency you're looking for, then give it to one person. They very efficiently vacated the chair because they allowed one person to rule. If you want to be effective, you bring other people into the process. That lessens efficiency, but it enhances effectiveness, and they could have effectively negotiated what was taking place yesterday if they had not opted to give one person rule. So democracy is all about people finding common ground. You don't turn your operations over to a single person and think that's going to be democratic. That is autocratic, and that's what got them to where they were yesterday, allowing one person to call the shots, which is a very efficient operation, but not very effective. So, <clears throat> Congressman Clyburn, when you look across the aisle, and when Americans look across the aisle when it's on television, uh, you see chaos and anger among the Republican Party. So with that mixture, what can you tell us about the prospects for anything getting done that will help the American public over the next few months? I think a lot uh, depends upon what the tone is when we get back next week. We're coming back uh, Wednesday uh, of next week, and hopefully by that time, uh, cooler heads will prevail. Uh, I've just given you uh, a name like uh, uh, Congressman Cole from uh, Oklahoma, a very calm, reassuring person uh, who I think to bring uh, the kind of tone uh, that we need on the House floor. Hakeem Jeffers has demonstrated uh, that he can do that as well. Uh, I've worked with Steve Scalise uh, for several years. Uh, I think he could as well. Uh, I just think that there are people uh, in this Congress that can have a common effect on uh, our body, and we uh, can have translate that uh, to the American people. Assistant Democratic Leader Jim Clyburn of South Carolina, it is always good to see you, sir. Thank you very much for being on the show this morning.